This is the third video in a series about how to use Model Builder and ArcGIS to automate geoprocessing tasks. In the first two videos, we created our model uh, builder, or model rather, in a geodatabase that we have um, locally. And we are starting to assemble that model um, by stringing together a series of geoprocessing tools within this model building canvas. So far, we've managed to uh, bring in uh, a series of t a table rather of Boston 31 reports. Uh, we were able to uh, create an event layer or a plotted uh, series of points of those of that table. We joined that uh, points to a neighborhood polygon layer so that we got a sum we actually got a sum of points within each neighborhood. We then assigned population values to the um, Boston neighborhoods by doing a spatial join with census data. That census data had to be the target in that case in order to allow us to properly join them. We then summarized the census data so we get a sum of population uh, for the blocks that fall within each neighborhood. Um, and then we end up with a um, output layer that contains the uh, neighborhoods and for each neighborhood the number of reports and the total number of population within that neighborhood. So at this point, what we're doing is we're going to add some fields that calculate the measures that we actually want to map, which is to say the number of reports per person in each neighborhood and the number of reports per area within each neighborhood. So in order to do that, we're going to be adding fields to that final output and then calculating the data that we're interested in. So in this case, the um, first thing we have to do is add the fields. So um, to access that, we're going to be going ag again under Data Management Tools Toolbox and then looking for the Fields Toolbox and then within that toolbox we'll find the tool to add fields. So I'm going to drag that in and I actually know that we're going to be doing several uh, of these. We're going to be um, adding a field to hold the area of interest and we already have acres but I actually want to add in another one that does miles and I want to show you how that works. Um, in addition, we're going to have a field to hold uh, the value for the reports per area, and then we need another field to um, calculate the reports per person. Um, so let's do one at a time. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to add a field um, to hold the area in square miles. So I'm going to double click on there, and I'm going to take the input table. It's going to be that that's going to be essentially this output right here. So I look through my various items here, and again, remembering that the blue recycle buttons indicate that that's the last output item um, within the model. The field name, I'm going to call it SQ Miles. Um, this one's going to be a float. It's not going to be a very large number. These aren't large neighborhoods. Um, nicely, we have field alias. I take, try to take advantage of this when I can. So I'm going to put in the full um, name here because um, this is the name that will show up when we look at the table and it's more readable. So then that field is created. We've got special type. Okay, so now we're going to populate that field. Well, excuse me, one, th one at a time. We're going to populate that field um, with um, area values. So, but let me add the other fields first. So the next field we're going to add is going to be the one to hold uh, reports per square per, per person. So I'm going to take this output right here and you can see very nicely that um, it's starting to add sequential numbering the name is still the same this is really helpful because then you know exactly where you're at so that'll be reports per person and again I'll use a float on this and use a field alias see the connections are coming in correctly. Then we'll take that next output so we're going to do this reports per square mile and we'll make this a float as well Okay, so now at this point we've got our fields uh, created, and again, I'm getting a little messy here, so I'm going to clean it up. 
All right. And so again, it's very, it's all linear. So, you know, it, this actually really helps in terms of the sequence events so you don't get confused. So now I'm going to calculate and populate those fields. So the calculate option is uh, accessed, um, the calculate field option is accessed also through the fields uh, toolbox. I'm going to drag that in. And I'm going to do several calculations. I'm going to do a calculation of the total area in square miles. I'm going to do a calculation of the reports per person and ultimately the calculation of um, reports um, per square mile. So first thing, let's do the area. So I'm going to double click and calculate field. The input table is going to be the last output item in this chain of um, items. The field name, now this is where you choose the um, field that will be populated by the calculation. So I'm going to use uh, the SQ, SQ miles. Now, in interactively, when you're in ArcMap and you want to calculate area, you use the Calculate Geometry option by right-clicking on a field in an attribute table. But when you're accessing the Model Builder, um, you don't have the same tool. So actually, in this case, what you end up doing is, you, in order to calculate area, you need to use a Python expression. So um, now, obviously, Model Builder's advantage is that you don't have to do programming, but it does help to know a little bit. And you can look this up when you're trying to figure out something. That's usually what I do is I don't always know exactly how to do something, but you, know, you can search for it, and it's not very hard to find. So we're going to type in a Python expression. It starts uh, exclamation point shape dot area at square miles. The nice thing is that these particular expressions um, you can replace square miles with acres or square kilometers or any kind of unit that you want to use. It's very, very simple because that's all you need. But you do want to make sure that you set the expression to be a Python expression. That's how it'll be interpreted. So that'll populate that field with um, square miles for each um, for each neighborhood. So we'll say OK. You see those are connected. The next item here, we're going to calculate the field of um, the reports. Um, actually, we might as well do the one per per area. So we're going to take the last output item and the field name is we're going to take reports per square mile since we just calculated that. And this time we'll, we, will, we will use the field expression calculator um, and we're going to take the um, number of reports which is that original join count and divide it by the um, area. Okay, And that's it. We just say OK. And then we're going to take the last output, the field name. In this case, we're going to calculate the number of reports per person. Oops, that's not the field name. Reports per person. Use the field calculator, take the join count, divide it by the um, population. Okay. All right. And again, clean up our model. And actually, let's take a, a longer look at this. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. And this is a nice thing about model builders. You treat it almost like you're working in an arc map situation. You can pan and zoom around. So we can see the sequence of events that are connected. So we've actually run the model up to this point over here. You can see, if you can see the shadowing there, we're going to run it again to just complete the process here um, and make sure that it works. So the process completed successfully no errors, so we'll hit close. And now we can add this item to our um, display. Okay. And we can see that we have calculated our um, reports per square mile. We've got reports per person. We've got total area. So now we actually have all the data we need to map it. And we've got a pretty close to completed process that we can work with um, now and here. And so the nice thing is we have the beginnings of uh, something that we might want to actually um, work with. And we can begin to see the patterns across the city. So one last item we want to add to this, um, we can see the reports per person and we can see the reports per square mile. Um, so we see the pattern here that in downtown Boston uh, it seems to have the highest um, the area with the highest number of reports per person. Um, and if we look at per area, we want to see if that's any different. And we see a slightly more concentrated um, act pattern than we did with the reports per person. So that, that's interesting. The last thing we want to look at is um, whether or not there are variations across the city in the 
timeliness with which these reports are responded to by the city. So we'll do that in the next video.